Welcome to episode 15 of SpaceX in the News. Today we're going to start off by talking about SpaceX's recent launch, as well as information regarding booster reuse and new updates on the Crew Dragon. Of course, we'll go over Boca Chica and what's going on with Starhopper and his launch facility, and I'll mention some pretty interesting news about Starship. I'll take a minute to talk about Lego and SpaceX, and we're going to finish it out with this week's honorable mention, and trust me, you guys do not want to miss this one. It's really cool. Let's get started. So do you guys like like my hoodie? It's pretty sweet, right? A friend of mine from SpaceX sent me some shirts this weekend. I love them. They're actually really comfortable. And I'm looking forward to showing the rest of them off as I do some more of these videos. I know in the past some of you have asked me where I get some of my SpaceX swag. And actually, if you just go to the SpaceX website and then you click on the shop button, it will take you right there. It's that easy. Okay, so let's get into SpaceX's most recent launch. This last Thursday on February 21st, SpaceX launched two satellites and a lunar lander into orbit around the Earth. All three payloads jettisoned successfully and the lunar lander is currently on its way to the surface of the moon. It should reach there in about two months. And SpaceX even managed to land their booster for the third time. I actually covered this launch in my first live video ever, and it was actually a really good turnout. I was expecting about 100 people maybe to stop by, but turns out over 1,000 people did. So thank you guys all so much for tuning in and watching the flight with me. It was such a great time. I, I look forward to the next one. I'm going to do the Demo 1 flight on March 2nd with the Crew Dragon, so make sure you guys tune in for that as well if you want to join in on the fun. I'll be doing Q&A again for sure, and if we happen to reach that 10,000 subscriber mark by that time, I will definitely be giving out some free SpaceX stuff. Join me. I can't smile because my lips are so dry right now. They're cracking. Sucks. So anyway, back to the recent flight. When we were watching it together, I did notice that when the booster was coming in on re-entry into the atmosphere to land, that there were a bunch of like huge sparks coming up from the bottom toward the camera on that rocket. But I really didn't think about what exactly was going on with it. Well, it turns out Elon tweeted about it that night saying that it was the highest re-entry heating to date. You could see the burning metal sparks from the base heat shield during the landing video. And furthermore, the next flight for this booster, the fourth flight, will be in April. And yes, it means this booster will be the one to take the Crew Dragon capsule up into the sky when it does its in-flight abort test. I have been looking forward to this test for well over a year. I, I mean, everyone who knows me pretty well by now knows that I love parachutes. I think parachutes are the coolest thing ever. Yes, retro landing rockets is awesome. I also think parachutes are awesome. And I cannot wait for this test to happen. You have no idea how many times I watched the Crew Dragon abort test from the launch pad just to keep my sanity in the meantime. I love parachutes. When Elon was asked how many launches he's expecting to get out of this booster, he replied that it's basically a sure thing this booster is going to get destroyed once the Crew Dragon capsule separates. Once the Crew Dragon is taken off the booster, the aerodynamic advantage is gone. I mean, that is the nose cone for the rocket. And since this event will be taking place during max Q, when the most aerodynamic pressure is on the rocket, that flat, hollow inner stage is going to just act, act as a bucket in the air, gathering up all the pressure and all the air, and it's just going to want to rip this thing apart. But if what I read is correct, the booster is going to destroy itself anyway. It will self-destruct once that capsule ignites and separates itself. But for every other Block 5 booster, Elon thinks he could get 20 to 30 flights out of them before they're retired. He seems confident that Starship will take over before this Falcon 9 fleet reaches end of life, and rightfully so, I believe. Again, the ultimate end goal is to completely eliminate the the use for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. Starship and Super Heavy will be able to do all these jobs these previous rockets have done, at a lower cost, and that's due to its 100% reusability factor. So yeah, Elon's expecting this Crew Dragon abort test to happen in April, apparently, 
Meanwhile, NASA is saying June, SpaceX is going to be refurbishing and reusing this Demo-1 capsule that's going up into space here in a few days as the in-flight abort test capsule. Elon did admit that a lot has to be done in order to meet this April deadline. NASA and SpaceX just released a press conference where they discussed this very thing concerning the Crew Dragon capsule. Again, as of the recording of this video, Demo-1 is expected to fly on March 2nd. SpaceX has just been awarded three more military contracts by the US government, two for Falcon 9 launches and one for Falcon Heavy. So Falcon Heavy could have as many as six solid launch contracts manifested by 2019 to 2021. And these three launches totaling a value of 297 million, which saves the taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars. However, ULA was also awarded three contracts for a total of 442 million, despite the fact that all SpaceX launches are drastically cheaper than ULA launches. However, looking on the bright side, just the mere presence of SpaceX in the launch industry's competition drastically reduces prices across the board. Okay, so let's go back and revisit something I briefly discussed in episode 13. Now I have this good feeling that this huge milestone has been passed now, and hopefully the snowball will start rolling downhill, gathering momentum, so we can get these engines on Starhopper, Starhopper can do its tests, Starship can start progressing, and not just one Starship, two Starships. What I was alluding to was SpaceX's upcoming plans to build Starship and Super Heavy in Boca Chica. Not just the Starhopper that they're building right now, but the actual Starship that's gonna take us back to the moon and one day to Mars. And just over one week after posting that video, SpaceX fans found job openings on websites like Indeed looking for Starship engineers in Brownsville or Boca Chica, Texas. Now this confirmed half of the information I alluded to in episode 13, but that's only 50% of the equation. At the time, Elon Musk was also planning on having a second Starship engineering team positioned at the Cape. The idea that these two teams would compete against each other to see who could build the first Starship. Now, it would be a friendly competition. Each team would communicate with each other about problems they experienced as to help the other team out. The ultimate idea being that things would move along twice as fast. Now, this means one of two things. Either SpaceX hasn't gotten around to posting job openings for the Cape site, or this plan has been nixed entirely. Only time will tell. Now, concerning the progress of Starhopper and its launch facility down in Boca Chica, for the last several weeks down in Southern Texas, the weather has been absolute garbage. Fog, drizzle, but the workers are still out there doing their job. Small progress is being made on Starhopper, and big progress is being made at the launch facility. However, it has been confirmed with pictures that SpaceX is building an entirely new fairing for the Starhopper. The bottom portions have already been made and local resident Boca Chica Maria said it's the calm before the storm concerning building activities. Yesterday, the crane moved stainless from tent to the yard. Could hear it better than see it. They are at it again, but it's just too foggy. Plus the launch site is at full speed. And I just absolutely love this picture that she took of these two workers on top of the bottom part of Starhopper. It is just so awesome. Now concerning Starhopper's Raptor engines, Elon was asked on Twitter exactly what's happening with them down at the McGregor test facility. Elon said the last firing they did to test the chamber pressure on the Raptor SN1 damaged a lot of parts on the engine. But don't worry, these things are expected when you test to failure. The great news is that the second Raptor engine, the SN2, is almost finished with production and will be ready to fire soon. There were some improvements made to SN2 after SpaceX did this test to failure with SN1. So that, my friends, is what you call progress. All right, so let's talk briefly about something quite a few of you are interested in here, and that is the official review results for my LEGO Falcon Heavy project. So in February of last year, I submitted my first ever LEGO project to LEGO Ideas. And it's that Falcon Heavy you see over my left shoulder. In just four short months, it reached the needed 10,000 supporters to be considered as an official LEGO set by a LEGO review board. Now it took about a year for the entire process to happen and it was my project and 10 other projects that were under review. And to be completely honest with you, it wasn't just a shock to hear that LEGO rejected my space project, but it also rejected the three other space projects as well. And you know, it was a real bummer to find out that we weren't gonna be getting a SpaceX LEGO set, but I actually felt kind of bad for LEGO because they received a ton of blowback all over social media. People just can't wrap their heads around the idea of why LEGO would reject space when it's obviously such a popular thing right now. But with that being said, I still want to offer my congratulations to the two winners. I suppose the good news is my brother and I have already submitted our next LEGO project, which is a Starship and Super Heavy. Obviously, as we gather 10,000 supporters, we're going to have a lot of changes to make to it. That's just a given fact that we knew from the beginning. But considering the future for the Falcon Heavy, my plan is to improve and perfect the build as much as I can between now and June, July sometime, and then put some instructions together, uh, get the pieces all listed out, and make it available to the public. How exactly I'm gonna do that, I haven't quite figured out yet, but we'll get there, we'll take it as it comes. All right, let's do this week's honorable mention. Oh! Yeah! 
Yesterday, Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2's VSS Unity made its second official suborbital flight to space, but it was the company's first time taking up a passenger that wasn't a pilot. This third crew member was Virgin Galactic's chief astronaut instructor and cabin evaluation lead. The crew experienced several minutes of weightlessness before returning back to Earth and landing on a runway. On this flight, there were also several NASA experiments, but like Blue Origin, the purpose of Virgin Galactic is to ultimately take passengers to space on joyrides. Unlike Blue Origin, it will be in a space plane rather than a rocket. The previous vessel, the VSS Enterprise, broke apart mid-flight, killing one of its pilots. Virgin Galactic was started in 2004 by Chairman Richard Branson. It will definitely be interesting to see what kind of achievements this company makes in the future. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I would say it's a pretty good probability that my next SpaceX in the news video won't be next weekend. Instead, I'll be doing my next live watch video for the SpaceX Crew Dragon Demo 1 flight, and I would love for you guys to join me. Win some free SpaceX stuff. Should be a great time. Thank you guys again for watching. Godspeed.